Hi, welcome back to the wood shop. There's a lot of discussion about what the most important woodworking tool in the woodworking shop is. A lot of people think it's either the jointer or the thickness planer or bandsaw. Uh, a few years ago I did a, a survey on my website and overwhelmingly I think it came back as table saw. But I don't agree with that. I think the most important tool in the workshop is me because I'm in control of any of those other tools. And the second most important workshop tool is the woodworking bench. So today I'm going to briefly talk about the workbench. While we humans were born with only two hands and hopefully we have all of our fingers, the workbench is like a little crew of tiny woodworkers that's ready to hold your work for you so that cuts can be made safely and boards can be made flat, smooth and square. Along the way I'll talk a little bit about woodworking basics so that you understand how a board that looks like this becomes a board that looks like this, which is four square, a board that has six faces that are flat and smooth and at 90 degrees to all the other faces that they meet up with. And really there's only three processes involved in doing that. And I will show you today how the workbench can take care of those three processes. All right, when we get wood, some, some woodworkers take it directly from the tree. Others like me, well, sometimes I get it from a tree, but usually I get it from a lumber yard and it's been through a sawmill where it's rough it's cut and it looks a lot like this. And it's, you know, kind of ratty looking. And I take it like that and then no, I use it. You can't wood. put a piece of wood like that into furniture or anything else. So you have to turn it into something that looks like this which is nice and flat and straight and square and that's called four square. In order to arrive at something that's four square like this, I have to produce something like this first out of a larger board. And how do I do that? Well the first thing that I do, if I only need one part, is I find in a, a good corner out of the board, I draw the part slightly oversized and then I cut it out with a circular saw or the bandsaw. If it's a big piece, I'll cut it out with a circular saw. If it's a smaller piece, my tool of preference for all this work is really the bandsaw. Now you can do it with a handsaw, like for example say I wanted uh, I had a board that's this wide and I wanted three pieces like this I could just strike a line on the board and use my saw bench and cross cut it with a cross cut saw on the saw bench and then I can rip it on the saw bench to rough length and do all that with a handsaw or a circular saw at the saw bench. When it comes to resawing or making it thinner then I would use either the face or the tail vise to do that. Or I would use the bandsaw, and the bandsaw is my tool of preference because I'm, you know, a little bit short of time out here because I do have a regular job. And that's how I would make this narrow if I, narrower if I wanted to make it narrower. I'll be honest with you though, when I go to the lumber yard, I tend to look for stock that, when, I'm, when I have a project in mind, I tend to look for stock that kind of matches the project to cut down the amount of time that I spend milling up lumber. Now if it's lumber that I want to have on hand, 
Oftentimes I, I will buy it extra thick and then I'll just resaw it and take the extra time. If I'm looking for something that is, say, two-thirds the thickness of this piece of wood, then I'll buy something thicker so I can get three of those pieces out of one, out of one, uh, one thickness of wood. But enough of that, this isn't really about milling four square, this is about holding stuff on your bench. But once it gets to this point, and it's time to turn it into this, then that's where the bench shines and where some of the extra bench appliances will help me out. I mentioned earlier that there are only really three processes. Once I have, if this for example were my rough dimension, what I need to do is to be able to plane this, is to plane with the grain a face, to plane with the grain an edge, and to and cross cutting and planing the end grain. Okay. When you have a teal vise like this, it's quite easy to open up the vise, throw in a couple of bench dogs into the bench dog holes. Make sure that they're low enough so that uh, your plane isn't going to run into them when they cut. Although Veritas ones are made out of brass. If I'm resawing lumber, I will use this this vise, but for the most part I don't use it very often unless I'm carving and then I have an irregularly shaped piece that I want to clamp. Now a lot of people say all you need is a, is a bench stop and you can put the piece of board along it and you can plane it, but if you use, and I've seen some people try to use just a bench dog, it's pretty wobbly. Now some companies like Veritas have come up with planing stops, but I prefer the one that I made myself out of a piece of 2x4 and that's all it is, is just a thin piece of 2x4 and I've drilled 3 quarter inch holes in there at the exact spacing of the bench dogs and I can, I can just push the bench dogs in and just recess them a little bit under the surface of the wood and there I've got a planing stop that works very well for face planing a board. Now to go one step further, I can use a batten with a bird's mouth cut into it and I can secure that batten with a hold fast. Now I have a Veritas version hold fast that's got a brass knob that works very nicely and I've used that for quite a long time. But I've, seen, but I've recently migrated to one of these old fashioned hold fasts. This one's made by Tim Charles and uh, you can find him on YouTube as well. Uh, he's called the Slice of Wood. And by just putting that bird's mouth in there, holding the piece of wood against the planing stop, putting the bird's mouth against it, and giving us a couple of sharp wraps, uh, this piece of wood can be held in here quite firmly, and that way it's not going to go, the back end won't skew sideways while you're trying to plane it. And this is my preferred method of holding down a piece of wood on the workbench just with a couple of pieces of scrap and one of these hold fasts in order to plane the face grain uh, with the grain of a piece of wood that you're trying to make four square. Now that will take care of the face grain. Now it's time to discuss how you handle the edge grain. If I'm planting the edge grain on a smaller board, I'll just place it in either the face vise or the tail vise, and that will hold it just fine. But what if the board is bigger than the capacity of the vise? When edge planing a long board, I prefer to stick one end in the face vise, and then the other end in a hand screw clamp. I used to hold the clamp to the bench with one of these, with, a, with another hand screw clamp, but since getting one of these old fashioned hold fasts, I much prefer, and it's much easier on the knuckles, not having this handle in the way, to place a hold fast in there and give it a whack, and that will hold the end of this just perfectly, and I can plane away at the edge grain. Now, if I wanted to cross cut this to the finished length, the easiest thing in the world to use would be a bench hook. A bench hook is just a hook that hooks onto the bench. It's a, just a flat piece of scrap that's got a fence that hooks onto the edge of the bench and another fence that hooks onto the wood. Now I cut mine like this so that when I saw through something I go into the bench hook because I try to make sure that I don't damage my bench with anything although you can see that after a few years you can't really help but get a few dings in the bench. The bench hook will save you a lot of that and uh, with a little bit of pressure from your hand, it will hold the work nice and steady. And once you've got your line marked on there, 
you can cross cut this easily and the work will be firmly held. Now this is an old one and I keep it around because it's a reminder of a number of things, one of which is that wood moves and that if you don't allow for that it's going to split. And I've moved to a slightly different design. Here's one that is a bench hook and a shooting board all merged into one. And it's a nice sturdy thing and it's glued. And one thing that I learned is that when you do the fences, I prefer to screw one end of the fence in and then mark it for square and get it all set up and then clamp it and then I'll screw the other end down. I don't glue this, I screw that. The rest of it is all glued together. But this fence is only screwed on so because it will get out of whack and when it does, then all I have to do is take out this screw, square it up again, and reinstall the screw in a slightly different spot so that it won't go into the same hole and drive it off. So I can still use this as a bench hook for cross cutting, but this one I can also use to shoot the edge of a piece of wood nice and square and flat and smooth so I have a really nice edge with which to work. You can see that one needs a little bit more work, but it's already on its way. Now, it doesn't take very much to get it to that point. All you need is a, a heavy plane and a firm hand and something that's sitting exactly at 90 degrees so that you can make a nice square uh, end on your board. Now what happens if my board is too big to fit on this? Well, I have a solution for that too. All I have is a, another one that was made out of the same material at the same time and I just cut, I basically made it extra wide and cut it in half and I can bridge a long board with that and I can still shoot the end of a long board but this time I don't have to worry too much about the fact that it's long and it's going to pivot and I've made sure that these two fences are um, compatible so that I can square up the end of this which is really out of whack, but I think that's a rough edge from the lumber yard. And you end up with these lovely feathery shavings of end grain. There's nothing nicer than end grain shavings. They're really fluffy and they're really good for starting a fire too. Now what if you have something that's relatively long and thin, and this is something specialty for instrument making, and you want to be able to glue two thin pieces of wood together and have a nice edge. Oops and have a nice edge with the grain in order to glue those two pieces of wood together. Well I have another solution for that which is also a shooting board and this is where my tail vise comes in very handy. This is just made out of old Ikea drawer parts. I needed it so I had to find a way. And I, it's just a bench hook, it's, just, it's the same kind of a shooting plane, shooting plane board as the other. I just clamp it into the workbench and then I can throw a thin piece of wood. Okay, I don't really have a thin piece of wood, but uh, with this I can throw a thin piece of wood onto this and then I can proceed to, oops, then I can proceed to shoot the edge of that uh, piece of wood nice and flat and square. And this a long heavy plane helps with this, but also this piece of wood is a little bit too long and beat up for this particular application. This is more for a guitar front or a guitar back. When doing joinery, the tail vise and the face vise work very well, but for dovetails I've grown to like this. That's a moxon vise that I clamped to the bench top using a couple of Bessie sliding bar clamps. And that works about as nicely as anything else that you can uh, imagine. And it, just like everything else that I've shown you, with the exception of the metal holdfasts, uh, are all just things that I've made out of scrap or wood that's been lying around. So it doesn't really take a whole lot of uh, expensive stuff. Even the bench, you don't, you don't even need a nice bench like this. As I said before, you can get away with something you make yourself. And I've seen lots of benches made out of 2x4s that were glued up and then had a piece of all thread running through to hold it together and then you just sort of plane it flat. And drill some three quarter inch holes here and there and you can buy these Veritas uh, bench dogs or you can make your own out of a three quarter inch dowel 
or you can do square dog holes. So that's just a short, uh, I hope it's short, that's just a short video on uh, ways of holding work at the bench uh, so that you can uh, produce good quality boards that are four square. And if you have any questions on anything, please uh, feel free to comment and ask, and I'll try to provide any clarification that you might need. I feel a little bit like Roy Underhill. I usually shoot, I usually do something like this in, I don't know, two, three days, maybe a week, sometimes months. But this one I've done in the last hour, and I'm sweating and bleeding, and uh, I know what Roy Underhill feels like now. I've picked up these ideas over quite a long span of time and I have uh, some ideas for some books that would be great to add to a woodworker's library. Uh, a couple of them particularly but there are three books that uh, that talk about uh, basic woodworking or workbenches that are really worth mentioning. Uh, the first is the newest of the books. This book is probably I think this is about 10 years old. It's called The Workbench. Uh, it's by Lon Schleining. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it's got a variety of different workbenches in here that suit all kinds of different projects and all kinds of different budget levels. And uh, there's some great information inside this book. Um, my workbench book of preference is this one that I picked this up. I think this one was published in... Um, 1987. This one is written by Scott Landis. He also did the workshop book and this this book will give you uh, diagrams that will show almost everything that's in here. The mocks and vices in here, uh, shooting boards are in here, bench hooks, all that kind of stuff is in this book along with four plans for benches. It's really an excellent book. And for basic woodworking, one of my favorite books of all time on that is this one. This book I think is about 20 years old now and uh, this Working with Wood by Peter Korn uh, who still teaches uh, somewhere in the eastern United States I believe. I can't remember if it's still in Maine or not. Uh, but this book will talk to you all about uh, milling a board four square and why that's important. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And if there's, again, any information extra that uh, you would like to have, then just shoot me a comment and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a pleasant day. Why do I do this to myself? <laughs>